Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a piece by the artist Jean-Leon Jerome. And in this episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Vestal Virgins. We're going to talk about the Roman gladiator sport, and then we're also going to talk about the Flavian Amphitheater. So let's jump right into it. So whenever you first see this piece, you know, you're met with this very wide canvas here. And we see the scene of what appears to be a gladiator seconds away from victory here. And of course, we see the direction of attention towards the audience there. And just this wide composition is very necessary to display the scene at hand. And so just, just imagine the scale of this work. Of course, we are standing kind of on the floor of the Colosseum there. But you'll see just how many just how many layers are to this work at hand. It even goes all the way up into the distance there. And so this grand sense of scale really introduces just how big and monumental this, this location was in this building. Even the ceremonies within this location, very, very important. And I think this grand sense of scale just does an incredible job at conveying that quite well. And so we see a very intricate, kind of very intricate designs here, whether it's kind of these rug styles up here, all the way to this, all the way up there, all the way to the gold statues, all the way to the backing there with the statues in the very far back incredibly incredibly intricate and of course this is a reminder that rome was kind of a kind of a converging point of many different cultures of course rome the roman empire went around and this is actually imperial rome in this picture but the roman empire you know went around and conquered and brought back the spoils of war and by doing so they brought back many different cultures and influences of different cultures into this one spot of course the roman Colosseum or the gladiator arena is one of the kind of one of the most popular examples is them bringing kind of foreign animals that people have never seen before and just imagine how much of a spectacle that would be that'd be quite amazing here and so the intricacy is a really good reminder of that of just how much culture converged in Rome and just how many people came to Rome as well and so you see that everywhere from this red to this stunning gold and that red and gold also does feel this sense of royalty and the sense of divinity as well and so, well, of course, we are looking at the Roman Colosseum, also known as the Flavian Amphitheater. And the Flavian Amphitheater was built shortly after Nero's rule. And Nero was, um, I guess, how would you say it? Uh, disastrous? <laughs> so after Nero's rule, of course, famously, uh, the, the phrase fiddled while Rome burnt actually came from Nero as a massive fire swept through Rome. And then he decided to build kind of a palace on top of that. And a lot of citizens did not like that. They had a lot of disdain for Nero. And it's quite clear that he did not care about the average Roman citizen. And so the result was, of course, the Flavian families came in and created this massive Flavian amphitheater, which is... I believe, I would say the most popular monument of Rome, period. I say that pretty confidently. That's one of the most popular things that we normally think of whenever we think of Rome. And so we just see this here, very, very stunning, a okay, crowd endlessly going into the back there. And the Flavian Amphitheater, or the Roman Colosseum, was a place to host many different things, from gladiator fights to showing off uh, you know, very exotic animals, even there's been some theories about uh, having kind of battles of of water battles in there. I guess I guess you would say it. And uh, you know we're not sure if this is a hundred percent sure because we haven't found any type of any type of uh, plumbing or anything under that. But you know it's hard to say whether they were actually able to flood this. Of course, if they did, that would be an amazing sight. And if you guys know a bit more about that, let me know. I'm really curious. But uh, regardless of that, you see the Flavian Amphitheater here in all its glory. And we see what appears to be a single gladiator here, of course, sporting that incredibly intricate uh, golden armor there. And, you know, kind of blood sports are pretty interesting. You know, we look back on Roman gladiators and we're kind of like, wow, they are barbaric. They are brutal. They're savages, but, you know, nowadays we still do look at a lot of combat sports, whether it's boxing, whether it's MMA, or things like American football. There's a lot of different variation of combat sports in nowadays. And so, 
Of course, we don't literally kill people out on a field, but it is a very dangerous sport in many different ways. And in that same way, we all gathered as spectators to watch that sport. Is that really what reminds me of this? You know, we, like I said, we're not killing people in our games, but we are, you know, gathering to watch combat sports, to watch the human form, to watch the the kind of the pinnacle of the human ability, especially even in a violent form. If there's anything bad about that, you know, it is good to keep it in a controlled area. And because if you suppress kind of these primal desires for so long, they will bubble up and explode. And so combat sports, I think, are quite important. And there's a lot of similarities, how we kind of gather for sports all within a massive theater. You know, we have different teams. We're probably rooting for different people. But regardless of that, we all do gather to spectate those combat sports. And so we see our subject here with the attention directed towards these kind of hooded figures here. And these are the Vestal Virgins who actually had a lot of power within ancient Rome. But we're not going to go too deep on those, but the the importance is that these are the Vestal Virgins, and the direction of attention is towards the Vestal Virgins. And what you'll see here is that the gladiator is seconds away from victory, has his, his foot right on the knee of a pretty much defeated subject here but the subject is still alive the subject is calling out to the vestal virgins maybe in a hopeful bid for mercy or something like that but you'll see you know he's looking straight up at them and the thumbs are turned down and this is extremely important and although it may not be entirely historically accurate but with the thumb turned down the audience is essentially telling the gladiator to end it so you know, with that in mind, we see the gladiator turning to the audience for the audience's judgment, and then the audience is essentially calling for blood here. And so the result would be, of course, the subject is then killed, and the gladiator is then victorious. But what's so remarkable at this, about this piece to me personally is... Well, I'm so sorry. I hiccup. So what's so remarkable about this piece to me personally are these incredible tones of red, this incredible energy throughout the spatial composition. It feels like we're right amidst the action, and I think that's incredibly important. It's incredibly immersive as the walls even go high above the head there. And so, you know, the result is a very energetic spatial composition. Even this, this vibrant red really adds to that visceral sense of energy there. Of course, we have a little bit of red kind of staining the sand floor there. All of it is a very, very historically accurate depiction of the Colosseum as well. And so this may not be entirely historically accurate. Actually, a lot of controversy and a lot of debate over whether the Vestal Virgins were bloodthirsty or whether they were even in attendance at all. But regardless of that, we just have this stunning piece here. And this actually did come from the 1800s. So it is a, a historical piece, no doubt. And so... After a short time with this piece, you're likely going to notice this figure up here sitting on a golden throne. This is actually the Roman imp emperor, and it's quite interesting. We talked about Nero just a second ago. And the opposite of Nero is someone who is actually helping and trying to you know, be accountable or, or at least showing himself to the public. And so the gladiator games or the Colosseum or any event at the Colosseum became a way for the average Roman citizen to at least get a chance at seeing the emperor there. And that's extremely important because even the Flavian Amphitheater itself was created as a way to give back to the people. You know, one of the famous lines, bread and circuses, uh, you keep them occupied and uh, they won't really care. So we know that the, say, democratic representation of of the Roman Republic was ended in favor of the timeline of Imperial Rome. So, you know, the average Roman citizen, not going to be able to vote, but they do have their bread and their circuses where they can come and be kind of blissfully distracted in a way. You know, they don't have as much power within the state as an average citizen, but they are able to attend these games, maybe with a friend, uh, maybe meet someone and just watch this incredible sport that's uh, out in front of us here. And so that's incredibly important. Of course, the emperor is in view, and that is a sign that the emperor is trying to give back to the people, or at least be accountable to the people, so you can at least have a chance to see the emperor there. And so um, the original artist, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, uh, John, I believe it's John, oh no, one moment. So the original artist is, yeah, yeah, John Leon Jerome. Um not 100% sure on that pronunciation, but I believe that's what it is. So he was actually a French 
uh, painter, sculptor, and historian in as well. And whenever I was looking at over some of his older paintings, the biggest thing that I noticed is he often incorporates many different cultures within his work at hand. And so we even see that here. You know, of course, you see the Roman, the impact. Of course, he didn't live in Italy. He lived in France, but he is depicting a Roman scene here. And there's also many different things, whether he's showing kind of Islamic culture, whether he's showing Northern African culture, you know, all of that. He does incorporate a lot of different cultures within his work. And so very historic artist, a very historic piece at that, and a very, very visceral, very energetic, and a very beautiful one as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned a little bit. Talked about a little bit about the Vestal Virgins. We talked about the Flavian Amphitheater, also known as the Roman Colosseum. And we also talked about the origins of the blood sport, as well as, say, Imperial Rome. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. My name is Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Apollo Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.